A new Baofeng radio, the UV9S Plus, advertises a tri-power, 1, 4, and 8 watts on both UHF and VHF. We're going to take a look at it today. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews news and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. Good afternoon. Welcome to the channel. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. If this is your first time to join us, thank you. Welcome. And I hope you will leave a comment below. So this is a UV9S Plus. This is a radio I picked up off of Amazon recently. I actually picked up a few Baofeng radios off of Amazon over the Christmas holidays, over the like b between like Black Friday and the end of the year, uh, 2021. I did that because the last two or three videos I've put on this channel about Baofeng radios, I get a lot of I get a lot of you guys coming by and asking questions, a lot of views, a lot of uh, interaction on those videos. So I'm like, well, let's just see what other models they got out there. So I'm always interested in testing the power advertised. Uh, limits and power advertised uh, performance of these Baofeng radios. This one is uh, advertised as an 8-watt radio, so we're going to put it on the meter here in just a second. We're going to look at that, but this one looks a little bit different than what um, some of the previous models I've, I've uh, run across have looked like. One of the cool things about this is that it came with an Abri. This is an Abri brand, it says right there, Abri. It came with a mobile, or a portable, I should say, um, way to charge it. Pull this out of there. So this is a USB-A connector to this little proprietary plug right here, which goes into the side of the battery right here. Now, I've seen this on a couple other Baofeng models. Um, it's not prevalent on all of them. I wish it was. I hope that we're going to start to see this a little bit more often on uh, on this brand of radio, but also on, on multiple brands of radios because... Charging your HT while on the go and not having to have a desk charger that plugs into the wall makes it more portable. It makes it more prepper friendly, if you will. It makes it more hiking and camping friendly. You can plug this into a charging bank that you, you know, like a 25, 20 or 25,000 milliamp hour charging bank that may or may not have a solar panel on it that you use to recharge your phone when you're in the field. This is just a standard USB-A plug. It also does come with a desk charger. So you can get, you can charge it via desk charger where you're at home, just the same way you do you would with previous models of, of Baofeng radios. But this one came, in addition to the desk charger, it came with this. So I thought that was pretty cool. Let's take a look down here at the screen of the radio. And I'm going to go to the overhead shot here. I'm going to zoom down a bit. Yeah, so this is the... It comes with this earpiece as well. This is a concealed earpiece. It's not a concealed earpiece. It's a regular EP earpiece with a push-to-talk. The standard K connector, which is right there. Kind of not see that in the... There's too much glare on the bag. K connector right here. I don't remember if I said it a minute ago, but a link to this radio will be in the description below. So you can check it out if you want to. I think this radio costs like thirty bucks, maybe twenty eight bucks, something like that. At uh, and but I, again, I got it on a sale for Christmas holiday season type stuff. So it may or may not be that cheap the next time you go find it. All right, we got the overhead lights turned off. Uh, those weren't supposed to be on anyway. They are daylight balanced, so it helps with some shots, but we don't need them today. So this is what the screen of the radio looks like. You can see it right there when it's not lit up. There's lit up right there, just, just fine. This right here, over here on this side, this is the port on the back of the battery there. That's where you plug in the extra charging cable. This USB-A charging cable plugs right in here. And then you can charge it from like a brick, or you can even charge it from a USB-A port in your in your vehicle. So that's good. Uh, the battery, or I'm sorry, the, the radio has the mount point for the belt clip on the radio itself. So you can take the battery off like that and mount the belt clip here. So you have multiple batteries and not have to worry about buying multiple belt clips. I like that style myself the best. Um, you can notice taken here, there is the specifics on the back, 7.4 volt, dual band 136 to 174, 400 to 520, and UVS9 plus. There's no FCC stamp on it, and there, uh, and it is full open transmit because I always I already tried it before I started rolling the camera. So it could be questioned about whether this is a legal to use radio, 
and I'll let you guys decide for that yourself. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to do. Just uh, I, I personally think the restrictions on on which radios we can use is is kind of dumb. In fact, you know what? Small side note here, because Part 97 in the FCC, which is what covers the amateur radio license, says that we can use experimental equipment. Now, we still have to be responsible that our equipment doesn't splatter and cause a lot of interference and cause a lot of bad RF coming out of the radio. But we can tinker and build our own radios. That's part of Part 97 that's not included in any other radio license. So the fact that – so I've, I have people sometimes ask me, is this a Part 97 certified radio? There is no such thing. There's Part 90 certifications for commercial. There's Part 95 for GMRS certified radios. There's no such thing as a Part 97 certified radio. Part 97 is an experimental uh, – allows experimentation in, in the radio art so we can build our own transmitters and use them, and we can tinker with transmitters like this perfectly legally. So even though this, uh, this transmits out of band, it'll transmit in the amateur radio band, which I have privileges for. So I can transmit in the band and make sure that it's not splattering too much. I am going to start doing some uh, some spectrum analyzer testing with some of these cheaper radios. Well, some of the ex more expensive radios too. So you guys look forward to that. I, I get to ask that question all the time, and I'm like, okay, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do that. So watch for that upcoming on the channel. But right now we're gonna we're gonna go through the menu on this. This is pretty much a standard menu. If you noticed, it's kind of blipping here and there. When I do these videos about, you know, the best radio here and there of 2021, 2022, if you'll notice that sometimes it, it'll blip. In fact, if I go down here. Four, four, two, nine, zero, zero. See it doing that? It's picking up interference right now. And it's annoying. So this is the difference between the expensive radios and the cheaper radios. The cheaper radios don't have as good of filtering or front ends, so they can't receive as well. They pick up a lot of splatter and stuff they shouldn't be receiving. So just the next time you ask yourself, why should I buy a $150 radio over a $50 radio? That's your answer. So we'll start back there. Standard menu. It's got, it looks like it's got um, 40 different menus. Well, 41 really, because it starts at zero. And then it goes to 40 right there. So you can reset it. So that's dumb. Look at that. It starts at a step of 20. So let's change that. I think it'll go down to 2.5. 6.25 step. Yep, 2.5 kilohertz steps. That's what we want to see like that. And then we can go through the menus like that. So that's that's pretty standard Bal uh, Balfang stuff. We've got, uh, this is your VFO and memory button here. This switches between the top and the bottom band. Like that, the arrow on the screen will tell you if you're on the top and bottom band, okay? This switches bands for you. So you can go to 440 band there, 2 meter band there. This is your menu button, obviously. Exit out of menu. You can change frequencies or change channels. You can go to channel mode. And, and it does talk to you. I've got the volume turned around. Frequency mode, channel mode. There we go. So it came pre-programmed with these six channels. I didn't change that at all. That's all just how it comes. It's got two buttons on the side over here. You can go to FM broadcast radio. It'll receive that. If you hold this down, it does this emergency tone thing. If you hit this, the monitor button on the side here it says monitor. There it is. If you hit it once, it turns on the flashlight. You hit it a second time, it gives you a flashing flashlight. Turn it, hit it a third time, it turns it off. If you hold down monitor, it opens the squelch so your squelch doesn't keep you from hearing what's going on on the frequency. Standard two-prong K connector there with the earpiece that it comes with. You can also add your own external microphone. I hit that by mistake. And it's kind of got a little, and, and it, the speaker's right here, so it's kind of got a little bit different feel to it than the standard UV5R with the way that it's designed on the side over here. That's your microphone right there. But, uh, you know, it's not a whole lot different, realistically. It's pretty much the same thing. It's got one knob on the top, which controls the volume. It's got this piece of junk antenna right here with an SMA female on the antenna and SMA male on the radio itself. I usually tell people, if you're going to go buy a UV5R or one of the cheaper Baofeng radios, throw the antenna away, the antenna that comes with it, put it in the trash, go get a real antenna, it'll improve your performance greatly. 
So that's the radio itself. Let's put it on the meter and see what we can see. Here's my MFJ 849 digital watt meter. Uh, special thanks to MFJ for, I say allowing me. You know, I, I, I bought the, I, you know what? I think I did get this one donated to me, if I remember correctly, way back when. I've had this one for a while. This is a really good watt meter right here, but it's got the LED light up here and plugged into the power supply. This is an Astron 50 amp power supply, which we're not using today because we're using the battery on the radio. So here's the radio. I'm going to put it on... I've got it on 146 dot, uh, yeah, that's fine. So I've got it on 146.52, <laughs> sorry, 146.52 at the top, 446.5 at the bottom. And we're going to test both of these on low and high power. So we're going to start out on two meters first. So TXP is your menu for, TXP is transmit power. So we're going to go low. And now you see an L above the 146, and that is where we're going to transmit. So it's about two and a half watts on uh, 146.52, KC5HWB testing. I'm actually on going into a dummy load right now, but I've got a HT sitting here in the shack, so I can actually hear myself if I talk like this into the radio, KC5HWB. So two and a half watts there. Menu. We're going to change it to mid-power. Cycle through the three powers there. Now you've got an M above the 146. Transmit there. Almost four watts, 3.7 watts. Menu. Now I'm going to go back power. here. High power there. Confirm. Exit. And it's still only doing about four and a half watts. So not doing the advertised eight watts on 146.52. On that there, now it's doing five watts. Yeah, okay. Still not the advertised 8 watts on 146.52. So we're going to switch bands. We're going to go down here to the 446 band. Menu. Power. Some reason when you first go into that menu, it says TXP wide. <laughs> okay. Menu. See, so yeah, TXP wide. You see that? But then when you go into it, power. You change it to high, mid, and low. You can't get back to wide. Strange. Okay. Fang menus. Gotta love them. Okay. There, transmit power low on the 440 band. The arrow's at, uh, next to the 446 for the bottom band. Not quite two watts, just almost there. Menu, power. Mid power. Confirm. Right there. Almost four watts. Supposed to be like one watt on low and four watts on mid for both bands. And it's doing more than one on low on both bands. And right is where it should on Menu. mid on both bands. Oops, no, wrong button. Power. High power. Confirm. There we go. 446.500 right there. Only about four watts. So, not what is advertised, which is not the first time we've run across this. It's uh, it's only it's supposed to be an eight watt radio. It's only performing about four watts. Now, someone told me one time they said you should use LMR 400 on your meter, but I've got to run a coax like. A foot, well, about two feet, two feet long. It really shouldn't matter on a run of coax that short. Although, I might go ahead and grab me some LMR 400 or maybe some MP coax and try it and see if I get any difference on it. But the difference between four and eight watts, you're not going to get that much loss on a piece of coax that's only two feet long, unless there's something really wrong with your coax. So, even if it were to bump it up to five or six watts, it's still not the advertised eight watts. Now, let me make something perfectly clear. Does that matter? You know, people, a lot of people come along and they talk to me and they, they're like, in the comments I'm talking about, they'll come along in the comments and they'll be like, well, I've got an eight watt radio, so it's better than what you're reviewing. I, I actually get eight watts out of my radio. I'm like, okay, okay. Do you know the difference between five and eight watts? It's very, very, very little. I'm talking about on an S meter. Obviously the difference is three watts. But you, you're not going to notice a huge difference between 5 and 8 watts. Now, you want to get what you pay for. So if you buy an 8-watt radio and it only does 4 or 5 watts, yeah, that's a problem. I would return it probably. You know what? I might be able to return this and buy another one. And uh, it, it may be totally different reading. I've done that before. Same model radio, same everything, but 
made at different times or maybe in different factories or something. The quality control over there at, at Baofeng is not great. But <clears throat> it's possible to get one of these that does 8 watts. I'm sure some of you will come along in the comments and say, well, I've got that radio. Mine does 8, 8.5 watts. It sounds great. Good. Good. That's that's great. That's That's what you paid for. That's what you got. That is good. It's not what I paid for. It's not what I got. I paid for 8 watts. I got 5 watts. Does that matter? It's really kind of up to you. I can certainly key up for Peters and hold conversations and use this radio in its intended function as much as I want to, okay? I might not be able to get quite as far to, away to other repeaters, but with an HT, you're kind of out of luck with that anyway. When, remember earlier when I said change out the antenna? If you change out the antenna, you're probably going to get better performance out of the radio even if it's doing only 4 or 5 watts than you would on a stock antenna that's doing eight watts because <laughs> these antennas are really junk. But anyway, so who's got this radio? What other Baofeng radios would you like me to review? What Baofeng radio do you have? Which one do you use on a normal basis? Put a comment below. Let me know what models you use, what models you found good results with. Let me know if you've ever found, if you've ever used this model and had the same results I've had and what you think about it. 73 and thanks for watching today.